Hey, so you might have noticed on my channel that I take fighting FOMO when it comes to hot comic books pretty seriously. So let's see what's going on with Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow number one. Hi, I'm Christopher, aka the Bronze Age Nerd. And today we're going to be talking about that Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow number one, and specifically how Key Collector approached it handling that comic book. So on February 4th, Key Collector released a statement on their Facebook page. I'll put it up on the screen and I'm gonna read that statement to you right now. There is no way this issue will hold a value higher than maybe $15 at most. This is not a scarce issue either. We've had requests suggesting an increase in value over what we are showing on the Key Collector app slash website, but we have a responsibility to take into consideration the short-term nature of elevated values that are subject to change dramatically once the current news cools off. Some sellers will take advantage of this time and gouge the market on hot comics. Do not fall prey to modern comics from major publishers whose inventory will exceed demand. Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow number one had an estimated circulation of 40,000 copies. If this were the print count of a book published in 1975, it would be extremely hard to come by in decent grade. But that is not the case for issues that were released in the past couple of years. Let's not get crazy with a little uh, House of L symbol on the S and let's there. That's pretty funny. And they also show a couple listings for this book going for about $50. Now, at the time that that was posted, the Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow comic was listed with that high value where it says, um, uh, you know, low, mid, and high. It was listed with a value of $5. So fast forward to today, and that comic is listed with a value of $25 for a high value and $2 for a low, $8 for a mid. There is no notation on the current listing about the post that was made on Facebook, and the price has gone up, and that's all happening just one week later. So what is my issue with this? It mostly stems with the original post that was made on Facebook, but that's not even the, my real big issue with this, is if you're going to list the values, those should be accurate numbers. Those shouldn't be your, this is what the book should be worth. This should be you reporting the values of what it's actually worth. I fully understand that values on comic books are actually much trickier to figure out than people will often assume. I do values regularly on my channel for previous price lookups, and my method has been to take several different sources. For example, I use uh, Cover Price, I use um, Overstreet Access, ComicsPriceGuide.com, and go collect and eBay sold listings to figure out my values. I take five sources to cast a wide net to try to get as much value information as I can, and that still doesn't even tell the whole picture. So I understand values are tricky, but if you're going to try it, if you're going to list values for all the comic books on your app, you have a responsibility to present at least factual data as much as you possibly can get it to be factual, and if you're not, for some reason, if you're not going to list the factual data and you're going to say that it's in the it's in the name of trying to stick up for the community, making a Facebook post about it that many of your subscribers and will not see isn't the way to do it. The way to do it, I mean, maybe that's a supplemental way to do it. The way to really do it, though, is to put that information on the listing for the book. So when people saw the listing and they said the high value is $5, and they never saw your Facebook post, you know, those guys include notational information below the listings, those bullet points and the brackets and everything, all the time on listings. Go ahead and say, you know, we believe this book is in a temporary price inflation and will fall back down, so we are listing a stable FMV. Simple as that. What's wrong with saying that? But your job, ostensibly, is to report the data to report what is trending, to report what is good for information for speculators, what is first appearances. By the way, aren't there two first appearances in this book? They're not even listed on the key collector listing for this book. Why not? Am I wrong about that? I'm pretty sure there's two characters that appear in this book for the first time. So how come that information isn't there? That just seems strange to me. That Like, that's your job, not this, like, price adjustment, like, white knight kind of a thing. Key collector comes out swinging and says, don't fall for this FOMO. And, and I applaud that in a vacuum. But coming from Key Collector, it's a, little, it's a little funny because every week they put out a list of the trending 20, and that causes books to spike all the time. Now, Key Collector's values that are listed, that low, mid, and high value, are notoriously inaccurate and, and often misunderstood, by the way. Some people think that means low-grade, mid-grade, and high-grade. According to Key Collector, that means 
the low end of the average price they're seeing to the higher prices they're seeing with mid being more of an average. I believe that's approximately how that's supposed to work. So that's one kind of misconception that might kind of play in here. But the, the real problem is they're going around saying now that, you know, sellers will gouge you on this and um, that that's really strong wording. I, I, you know, I might be inclined to agree. I, like I said, I love to fight FOMO on this channel. It's one of my favorite things to do, but it seems a little, well, it just seems interesting coming from Key Collector. And so I love fighting the FOMO, but why, why would you pick this book to take a stand on and not only pick this book to take a stand on, but then one week later, you're listing that high value. You know, you're saying that it's maybe a $15 book. Well, now it's a $25 book on your app one week later. I don't know. Am I, am I crazy? Am I taking this out of context? It just seems odd to me and it seems hypocritical. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from that. In the meantime, I have my channel members and a list up on the screen. Thanks a lot for all your support channel members. I appreciate that. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, there are some cool perks and there's a join button down below if you want to hit that to support the channel. If not, I totally understand and appreciate you watching the videos. I'll catch you in the next one. And until then, I want to remind you as always, hey, 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 hey. Read comics every day.